My first visit to the Lake District was Easter 1957. It was a day trip by train from Preston in Lancashire. I was only 13 at the time. Nevertheless, the area made a great impression upon me. Since then, I've what climbed most of the fells. I got to know Alfred Wainwright, the, the guidebook writes up to thousands of photographs, and some of them I put together as an audio visual show uh, presented in one of the theatres in the Lake District for the benefit of the Friends of the Lake District. I live 300 miles from the Lake District, so the taking of photographs can only be done occasionally. The best thing I can do, of course, is to go and stay overnight in a hotel, preferably for a week. Otherwise, I'm sitting here, as now, in Surrey. And when it's beautiful and lovely up there, I can only sit here and imagine what it might be and what I am missing. I used to run photographic holidays for HF holidays, and they had two hotels in the Lake District, one at Coniston and the other at Keswick. There was also one at Sedba, not too far away, and you could get to South Lakes quite easily. When it comes to teaching photography, then one of the best ways is by example. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. We would have a teach in the previous uh, evening, and then out in the field, I would demonstrate to the group how the shot was taken. A proof of the pudding, if you like, and it worked. And anyway, if I can't do it, if I can't practice what I preach, then maybe I should be doing another job. However, for this program, I'm not going to give any tuition. You can learn that from my other YouTube programs. But when it comes to a place like the Lake District, a landscape of mountains and lakes, not too far from the sea, and facing a westerly prevailing wind, then it is the weather that matters, the quality of light, not technique, that adds that magical touch, that touch of magic to the photograph. You have to be in the right place at the right time. I start my journey at Derwent Bank, where the grounds of the HF Hotel sweep down to Derwent Water. Timing is the most important skill in landscape photography. These views are only 300 yards from my bedroom, but being in the right place at the right time is just as important when I am 300 miles away at home and knowing when to make my move when things look promising. Be prepared to suffer for your art by enduring a long trek in the freezing cold. With this location, the nearest road is at least a mile away, but sometimes you are lucky to capture that mirror reflection, and here at Bleed Town there is a convenient car park. It doesn't happen every time, but at Selmere I was in time for a touch of mist, but then I got both mist and a reflection at Oldswater. Normally, bluebells are associated with woodland, but at Rydal Water, the hillsides are full of them. You might think that a classic picture postcard shot of Ashness Bridge is easy. If so, over to you. This is a honeypot, but I have timed my visit perfectly. Also, there are trees out of shot on the left, come at the wrong time, and they will cast heavy shadows right across the scene, ruining it.
Beyond Ashness Bridge is Surprise View, living up to its name with a mirror image in Deltwater. Not easy to judge. I could have done with a reflection in Tarn House, but that lighting is magic. At Rydal Water everything came together. Mist, reflection and a touch of atmosphere. Wainwright reckoned that the best view of a fell is from mid-height, and this is something easily experienced on the way to the tops, and if you can get some obliging walkers to pose for you, so much the better. Mirror reflections on the tops are rare. More easy are those at a lower altitude, but I do like the fence entering the scene. The earlier view of the town was actually on the summit of Haystacks, and this is the path to that fell, which Wainwright likened to a shaggy dog in its appearance. This is remote Far Eastdale, the approach to Sergeant Man, which I climbed a few years ago, and from the top we look down onto the Langdale Pikes. Don't overlook locations on the periphery of the lakes. They are just as interesting and less frequented as those honeypots you keep on going to. Spending a few days at Ravenglass on the Cumbrian coast enabled me to work with light on several occasions. And near Kendall is this viewpoint, Scout Scar, which you miss when using the bypass. I've captured it in late afternoon, and those distinctive peaks in distance, yes they are, the Langdale Pikes. Honeypots like Rider Water will always be an attraction, especially when the weather is doing the right stuff, and whilst out on any walk, I am always on the lookout for changing weather patterns. When I retired in 2019 from leading holidays, my finale was the Castlerigg Stone Circle late in the day, and oh boy, did I get it right. Courtesy of the weather, of course. Nothing to do with photography. <laughs> <laughs> 